Hey guys, it's Kate. I hope you're having a great day today. I'm here with another mixed media type intuitive art, painting, acrylic, drawing, mark making, the whole nine yards. So I hope you'll join me today. I had a lot of fun making this and the process is sped up so you can follow along with all the steps, but it won't take five hours of your life to finish. So um, I hope you enjoy this video today as much as I enjoyed making it and come along for the ride. So I'm working on mixed media paper. It's actually Master's Touch brand and I got it at Hobby Lobby a while back. I think it's a 110 pound weight and it holds up pretty well. So I went in with some pencil and some acrylic paint marker but before I started um, the video I actually covered the paper with a really thin coat of gesso just to kind of get it started and give the paper a little bit a little bit of more thickness and durability and I have all my edges taped down with some washi tape so I am just going all over the place with marks I'm not thinking about where I want anything to go what I want it to look like I'm just kind of scribbling doing some quote-unquote handwriting <laughs> but it's not actually any words or letters and I went in also with a gel stick and I'm going to go over that with some gesso. And so the gel sticks from King Art, they're pretty pigmented and they're water soluble. They kind of have um, like a creamy texture, almost like a lipstick or something like that. And I've been enjoying using them. I wasn't really sure um, what to make of them at first, but I guess they're kind of like the gelatos, which I've actually never used. But I did get these to try for a few dollars at Walmart one day as an impulse buy. So I've been kind of using them here and there in different art journaling and mixed media. And then I'm going to mix, you know, the discount King Art gel sticks with some golden fluid acrylics because that's how I work here. And I love that turquoise color. It's one of my favorite colors I've ever gotten. Golden paints are just beautiful. And you can see that it's pretty transparent too, which I really like because you can still see the marks coming through. And a lot of it will be covered up later, but for now I kind of like seeing all of the different things going on. In some of the spots, I've mixed it with some gesso to kind of give a little bit more opacity to the color and to also lighten it up in some areas so it's not just the same shade of blue all through. And then I'm also going to break out the Amsterdam acrylic ink. And I got some of these on sale a while back at Hobby Lobby and they were just a fantastic deal. I don't know what happened there but they got rid of a lot of their stock and so a lot of their name brand items they had on like a fire sale because I think they're moving over to maybe all masters touch I'm not sure um, maybe if any of you know you can leave a comment down below and say what's going on there if you shop at Hobby Lobby but I love these acrylic inks and I've played around with them a little bit and I've been trying to, you know, get them out more because I have them and it's, it like never occurs to me to use them. I don't know why because <laughs> they're, they're pretty fun and they are very pigmented and I like the transparency. I don't, I don't know why I was having transparent vibes when I made this. <laughs> so now I'm going in with the regular acrylic paints and I'm going to play around with those. And I still really don't have any cemented ideas of what I'm doing. I'm just having fun with the paints. It, it really is such a fun process. And I've made a couple of these that I didn't end up posting, um, but they were still a lot of fun to do. I just kind of reached a point with those where I wasn't really sure where to go next. I did record them and so if I revisit them and kind of finish those up I'll probably will post at some point but I think I reached the end of the line for now on those. I'll have to think on it some more. 
<laughs> but for this one, I ended up um, really digging the kind of earthy tones and the yellows and the, the burnt sienna. And now with the unbleached titanium, I really like how that looks over the blue. And the marks are kind of just slowly fading into the background. The brush I'm using is a Simply Simmons. I don't remember where I got it, but the it's one of the more inexpensive brushes. And it has really rough bristles, but I love using them because I can really scrub at the paper. And it leaves those really nice... Um, brush marks, which I enjoy. So I'm going back in with some more gel stick. And I'll also kind of dilute that with some water. But the orange, I thought, looked nice with the, the burnt sienna and the yellow ochre and everything. So it's definitely getting warmed up after the cool turquoise. <laughs> kind of matches my shirt, actually. And it's funny as I, like, as I watch this as I'm doing the voiceover, it's really interesting to see sort of on camera how it evolves. It's different when you're sitting and making the painting, but I see all these spots where I'm going with my paintbrush and color and thinking, oh, why did I do that? Oh, why did I do that? And I'm just kind of going through with a sort of random geometric design. I still don't really know where I'm going with this. Um, I'm just sort of experimenting with different marks and patterns and something would just kind of pop out at me. And then I would highlight that area or cover it up. I have learned as I go through and do these projects that I tend to gravitate a lot toward the sort of geometric type stuff and, and things that are a lot of patterns and dots and circles and leaves or whatever. And, um, seems to be what I just naturally gravitate to. <laughs> and I look at my back catalog on, on YouTube now with my videos I've posted, and I'm definitely starting to have a theme, even though I have a lot of different sort of styles on there. And I do a lot of watercolor videos and things like that, but um, the subject matter seems to be kind of consistent. <laughs> but it's fun experimenting with different styles. So I love my circles, but I can do circles a hundred ways. And today, I guess I'm going to do some rectangles. You can see as I'm putting the yellow and kind of crossing it over the white lines, when I was actually working on this, um, or when I work on a lot of these actually, I'm kind of thinking when I start doing something, I'm doing almost like a whole layer of that thing. So when I start doing the white lines, I kind of put it everywhere it seems right on the paper. And same thing with the yellow, and I kind of covered over one of the white lines and thought to myself, oh, I kind of like that. So I just kept going, and then I go into the next color, but it all kind of comes together into this really nice layered painting. And there's so much visual interest there to me when you go back and look at it later, and you can see little bits and pieces of each layer kind of poking through and, you know, you just keep getting closer and closer to what the final painting will look like. And it's 
really fun process. And I broke out that fan brush and I really loved the lines that that left behind. I try a couple of new things in this video. I tend to go for like the rounds or the filbert brushes and I've got a um, flat brush but I don't reach that often for the fan brush and it's kind of underrated at least in in my brush collection <laughs> I need to break it out more so I'm going in with the purple and just kind of going through some different colors and still staying with the sort of geometric theme with the rectangles and lines but more straight edges than round although I did have a lot of roundness on the bottom layers So when I was going through and I put the little tiny marks with my brush, I decided I liked the larger chunky lines. So I went back through with that, um, that purple color and did some larger marks. And now I'm coming in with this metallic marker that I actually got at Dollar Tree and I, um, did some, uh, testing on it in a marker and paint pen video a while back, but it's really nice to use. I mean, it's kind of amazing <laughs> what you can get for a dollar twenty-five. <laughs> some things I would never buy again, but some sometimes you find a little bit of a treasure. And those metallic markers, they're not all that metallic looking, but they also really have nice colors and they're pigmented. So I wanted to break up all of those shapes and stuff and go back in with another layer of marks. So I got the China marker, the pencil, and that metallic marker, and I'm going to go back in with more paint again. And I've got this silicone, I guess you could call it a paintbrush. It's um, what do they call it? The color shaper, I think, or something like that. I have a little set of them that I got and they're so much fun to use. Oh my gosh, the two inch one that I got, it will lay down paint on paper so fast and in an even layer. So, I mean, it really comes in handy when I'm covering with gesso or something like that. It is awesome. And I actually used it in my, um, my video where I did my pre-painted journal pages. So I wanted to bring back a little bit more neutral into this and also some darker colors. So I went with that brown and I'm kind of going around some areas to bring in some contrast and also to kind of tone down the bright colors a little bit. I've got a lot of primary action going on with the, the reds, the yellows, and the blues. So I'm going in with some more brown to just kind of ease it up a little bit. And so when I went around my first purple, I really liked how it looked. So I just kept kind of going around with that theme throughout the painting and just kind of putting the brown around it very loosely so you can still see some colors and other layers coming through but definitely adding some more of that dark neutral color and then i'm mixing in some more yellow ochre and the unbleached titanium just to give it some variety. I try not to go through with all too much of one color. I like to do some mixes on my uh, palette slash wonderful styrofoam plate. It's very fancy, so um, I think you can get them very inexpensively. <laughs> we had some extras in the house that I'm using up, so 
it's been kind of fun to use, but actually for these, especially with filming, it's kind of nice because I can just hold it over my painting while I'm mixing and you can see it all happen on screen. So it lets me kind of share everything and still have a close up on the painting, which is nice. And I'm starting to kind of think about where I want this to end up. And I'm still just sort of having fun putting marks, but it's starting to kind of go through my mind. Okay, what do I actually want this to look like? Um, I can sit here and make marks all day because it's fun, <laughs> but how do I want to finish it? And so I'm kind of testing the different colors now and... You know, as you kind of watch and it's going through the painting, you can see as each color gets added and more and more of it's added to the page, you can really see the sort of mood of the paper change a lot, which is really interesting to see on camera, actually, for me. I mean, just in the last couple of minutes, it went from, you know, a lot of purples, blues, and yellows to almost um, a lot more weight on the earthy tones and the browns and the unbleached titanium and the yellow ochre. And you can still see some of those bright colors and uh, probably more of the purple than the other, but it definitely changes the tone And so I'm trying to figure out what I want the tone to be, if that makes sense. And I'm also thinking about how I really love the pattern that's kind of emerged from all of the marks. And I'm sort of thinking in my head how I want it to look where... It can be a little bit less busy and I'm kind of drawing focus to an area um, without, you know, kind of just uh, assaulting the senses, if you will. <laughs> I'm still adding that brown to places where I think um, could use some more contrast. Same thing as I did with the whites and the other colors. I'm just getting it kind of spread out around the paper so I don't have just one spot with a color. So I just kind of, I'm always moving my eye around while I'm painting to see where I'd like to drop color next. And so in those kind of large white areas, I wanted to kind of make them a little bit smaller. So I added some brown to some of those spots and I'm going over a little bit of that yellow too. And then I'm going to let the whole thing dry. So I love stencils actually, and I have a bunch and I don't use them as often as I should. But I also have had folks ask where I get them, and sometimes I don't remember. And I just wanted to say sometimes the best ones are ones that you make yourself. So I wanted to play around, and like I was talking about before, toning down some areas and bringing in focus. And I wanted to have a nice, strong contrast. So I chose black, and I just cut a shape out of some cardstock. So I could use it as kind of a base to add some of that really nice texture. And I, I just love how it turned out. And it's so simple to do. And if you have um, like an X-Acto knife and a little cutting mat, you can cut out whatever kind of shapes you want. And you can make your own patterns, your own textures. And it's something that I definitely want to do more of in future videos for sure. 
So I'm using my flat brush and I'm just kind of stroking down from the paper so that I get that nice hard line, but then it kind of feathers out as you get toward the center. And so I had kind of decided that I want my focus area to be that nice pattern spot toward the center, but I'm going to kind of tone down the area um, on the top and bottom above and below those black sections. And I thought that looked really neat actually. Um, so I just went with it and I came back in with that purple that I really enjoyed using and it's in the painting and other areas and it is also transparent. So I was able to paint over the whole thing and kind of add a glaze to it, which you know, sort of faded it into the background a little bit, but you could still see a lot of the marks that I made and the the different um, shades of the colors I used, but all with kind of a purple lens. And so I'm adding just a little bit of water to the paint to tone it down a bit, but that's really just to make it easier to spread. That particular color is semi-transparent and I really like using the Creative Inspirations um, acrylic paint and I use a lot of Liquitex too. If you do use Creative Inspirations, there is a chart on Jerry's Artorama who sells them and you can download it and print it and it has all of the um, opacities of all of their paints in that collection. So I wanted to add some more contrast. So I went back in with the same stencil I cut and I added some plain white. Now my thought process for this is as it was going down, <laughs> well, when I first chose that I was like, yeah, white sounds great. But when it went down on the paper, it just didn't feel right to me. It was just very stark black and white and the rest of the painting is just filled with a lot of warmth and so I I end up kind of fixing it a little bit um, down the road in the video but it doesn't stay like that so I'm just sort of thinking okay what do I want to do so I started just putting little dabs of yellow here and there to see how it kind of looked and to try to bring some of that warmth back into the painting that I liked so much. And so I'm just experimenting a little bit with that and seeing how it looks and going slowly because I like the painting as a whole, but I just want to try to tone down that white a little bit. And then I think, well, maybe I'll add some yellow to the purple area. <laughs> and so I'm just experimenting, and that's what this is for. And it's just another one of those layers. And I'm going really lightly with my paint in that center area. And the yellow ochre is another sort of semi-transparent color, so it won't really cover up what's below it unless you put on a really thick layer. And so then I was thinking, well, <laughs> maybe I should add a little bit of white in other parts and I wasn't too crazy about that either so I kind of finished putting in my marks here and I'm just thinking it through and thinking about how I feel about it how I feel about how it looks and I had used that unbleached titanium which is kind of like a creamy white and not such a bright white and um I was just thinking, okay, so what can I do to make this look the way I want it to look? But 
but I haven't come to the term, come to terms yet with, <laughs> well, I guess I'm coming to terms with it now because now I am putting the yellow over everything, which ends up being just what I wanted. And it took me a little while to get there, but I did get there. And I thought that the yellow looked much better. It's still bright, still has contrast, but a lot more warmth, which I thought went better with the rest of the painting. And so I'm just going through and covering up that white and a little bit of it is peeking through here and there, but it's not sort of in your face bright white anymore. And I really like that. I love to hear if you do these types of paintings, intuitive art, or I guess uh, could be journal pages too. I have art journals too, um, but it's been kind of fun working with the bigger sheets and it's really an enjoyable process to just not only not care, but purposely not care <laughs> and just do what feels right in the moment. So this was so much fun to create and I hope you like these videos. Um, and like it's, you know, sped up so that you can see the whole thing or would you prefer cuts? But I definitely won't cut one of the best parts, which is taking off the tape because that is so satisfying when you get to see those crisp white edges come out. And I happen to have just the thin washi tape on hand, so I had to do two layers. <laughs> so it takes a little longer to unveil. <laughs> And look at that edge. And so if you stay with me, I will do some close-ups so you can see the marks and everything in the background and um, see all the layers a little bit more close up. And it was so much fun to do and you can just see all those layers coming through. I really hope if you can take some time, you try something like this and just go where it feels right and have fun and use your supplies. And I hope you'll join me again soon in my next video, but until then, keep creating.